Yo what's up guys it's Aptrix here today in this video I'll be telling you guys the updated 2024 best settings for Yuzu emulator android if you want to emulate titles like Assassin's Creed 3 Remastered, Dragon Ball Z Kakarot, Pokemon Scarlet, Pokemon Sword or even games like Legend of Zelda, WW2K18 etc. So before starting if you guys are new here be sure to hit that like button subscribe turn on all notification as I upload similar videos on my channel. Before I start with the best settings let me talk about one common issue of Yuzu emulator android that is not having an mark GPU support. I have tried out Yuzu emulator on many Mali devices including my Redmi K50i which I tested out previously. I'll put that video on the iCard above but basically you will get lot of crashing issues, low FPS issues and even incompatible games issue whereas if you try the emulator on a Snapdragon processor Android device with Adreno GPU those games should work. Now why is this happening? That's because Yuzu emulator Android is not completely optimized for Mali GPU Android devices. It's only optimized for Adreno GPU but I have and good news for you guys the only thing you'll need to do is wait for some time i know many of you guys have exynos processor mediatek processor nowadays they are really great processor for gaming unfortunately it's just not supported in emulators you won't be able to play AAA titles like zelda pokemon sword etc but you should be able to emulate small titles like tomb raider pokemon let's go pikachu and so on that too only if you have an high end android device though i'm pretty sure the developers will be working to find a fix for mali gpu uh, and provide stable amazing Nintendo Switch emulation for those devices as well. With that being said, let's start with the best settings. Now, these best settings are universal. They will apply even if you have an Mali GPU Android device, but unfortunately, you won't be able to add a GPU driver because this option is only available for uh, devices with Adreno GPU. Now, let me talk about official minimum requirements for Yuzu emulator Android. Uh, according to me and my testing, you need at least 6 to 8 GB of RAM, Snapdragon 680 processor or above, and that's about it if you want to try out Yuzu emulator. If you have Snapdragon 680 processor or above, you should be able to use an GPU driver. That's where we'll need to apply the Mesa Turnip Adreno driver latest versions and use them to get better performance and better graphics quality while emulating some Switch games. Now there is also one issue, some drivers may work on some devices. Uh, if you get any black screen issues or crashing issues, you can try using the system driver. But in the most cases, you can go with the Mesa Turnip Adreno driver, which is completely open source and is available on GitHub. Anyways, once that has been done, let's go to advanced settings. As usual, I will always recommend you guys to make sure to turn off limit speed percentage. But unfortunately, there is a bug with Yuzu emulator where after restarting the emulator, it will automatically get enabled. So that's why we'll be manually setting the limit speed percent to 400% because we want to get the maximum amount of performance possible. Now, this might cause your device to heat up. And if you are not okay with that, then you can decrease the limit speed percent to 200 or 100%. 200% means 60 fps 100 percent means 30 fps anyways we'll be disabling dock mode to get the best amount of performance possible because uh, dock mode will increase resolution decreasing performance in some scenarios anyways once that has been done the main settings are present in graphics the accuracy level in graphics setting depends on the game which you are emulating. For example, if you face any graphical issues, then you'll have to increase the accuracy level to high. This might affect the game performance, but as I'm showing you the best settings uh, for both graphics quality to fix glitches and fix other bugs, if you are facing any, then you should increase the accuracy level of graphics to high level. If you want better performance, if you are playing on a low end Android device, then set the graphics accuracy level to normal. Once that has been done, in terms of resolution, you can go all the way up to 4x resolution. No one wants that because you will just get unplayable results. For that, we'll be setting our resolution to 0.75x or 1x. If you have Snapdragon 888 processor or above, you can go with 1x handheld resolution. Uh, but if you have an low-end Android device, definitely go with 0.5x resolution or 0.75x resolution. Now, even though the device which I'll be using in today's video has Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 processor, I don't like going going uh, even to 1x graphics resolution, I always set 0.75x so that we get uh, amazing performance doesn't really affect the graphics quality that much because we have a brand new option known as FSR sharpness in the newest updates of Yuzu emulator Android. Now FSR sharpness basically will uh, determine the performance as well as graphics quality of the game which you are trying to emulate and it is dynamic so it will matter sometimes and that's why I have kept it in the middle at 50% by default it is set to 25% uh, but I think 50% is great for adequate performance as well as graphics quality but if you have have a low end device, I definitely recommend you guys to decrease uh, the FSR sharpness level to 0%. Once that has been done, make sure to enable disk shader catch 
force maximum clocks this is very important enabling this option will make sure that you get more than 30 fps uh, your device's full potential will be used while emulating any switch game make sure to also enable asynchronous shaders and once again uh, if your device starts heating up while emulating any games on yuzu then make sure to turn off force maximum clocks all right guys those are going to be the graphics settings the most important setup is going to be to select the cpu backend as usual we'll be going with native code execution after the yuzu emulator androids nc build native code execution is very helpful uh, speaking of native code execution let me talk about the builds of yuzu emulator android which you should use if you want the best amount of performance and games compatibility you will need to use the github builds of yuzu emulator android because yuzu is a completely open source nintendo switch emulator for android the play store builds are not updated frequently you will get a brand new update on play store every two months and if you don't want to miss out on the changes that occur in these two months then you will need to check out the yuzu emulator android's official github page to get the latest build and as for the today's video we will be using the yuzu emulator android build number 250 which is latest the next step which i don't really talk about in my videos is going to be to make sure to dump your nintendo switch firmware onto yuzu emulator android you can go to manage yuzu data and make sure to add your firmware where as it is pretty important if you want to fix graphical issues and run some games which are not playable with the normal yuzu emulator then you'll need to dump your nintendo switch firmware like assassin's creed 3 remaster this game doesn't really work on yuzu emulator android unless you use and firmware after dumping your latest nintendo switch firmware onto yuzu emulator android this game will start working same might go with many other games so make sure to update your nintendo switch firmware in yuzu emulator android and once all of that has been set up just go ahead and open the game which you want to emulate for today's video we'll be trying out legend of zelda tears of the kingdom let me just go ahead and swipe back afterwards go to a uh, overlay option and make sure to enable fps counter as well as thermal indicator these are very important option because as i told you guys before in the latest build of yuzu emulator android you get an thermal indicator option which shows you if your device is too hot or cold at the top right corner currently you'll be able to see it's a smiley face which means that your device is doing great you don't really need to worry about the thermals of your android device anyways let me just go ahead and start legend of zelda tears of the kingdom by using an save file now i do prefer yuzu emulator android more than skyline emulator because it is very stable and many and many newer games are compatible with this emulator so as you can see we are getting stable 60 fps while emulating legend of zelda tears of the kingdom on yuzu emulator android once you have applied all the best settings you should be good to go to emulate your favorite nintendo switch games on your android devices with best amount of graphics quality very minimal graphical issues and with amazing performance so yeah guys be sure to comment down below what issues do you face while using yuzu emulator android and if it is fixable then i'll tell you guys the solution for that anyways that's going to be it for today's video thanks for watching i'll see you guys next time goodbye yeah this game looks pretty amazing